process it and I, I couldn't let go. And then uh, one time I was sharing just with one of the parents at the playground that I'm kind of going through this crisis. And he told me, listen to Tony Robbins. And I was like, who is Tony Robbins? I said, you're kidding me? You don't know who is Tony? I said, no, I don't know who is Tony Robbins. Because actually we come from a culture from Belarus and from Germany, this science of success or science of personal development are not so popular there. You know, I haven't heard of them while I lived in those countries. And also not so much here in Israel. And so I started listening to Tony Robbins and it opened up the whole world for me. That there's actually a science, how to be successful, how to set goals, how to achieve your goals, how to manage your time, how to set priorities, you know, how to improve your performance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in one of the talks, uh, Tony Robbins, I don't remember the exact words, but he said, uh, uh, one common tra uh, feature of extremely successful people is that they journal. Uh, and I was thinking, journal, what does it mean? Um, and then he also said, not every person who journals is a successful person, but every successful person journals. And I thought, okay, I need to, I want to be a successful person, especially after that failure. So I need to look more into journaling. And then I started looking into it because the word journal has many different meanings. And then I understood it that it's some kind of planning, some kind of scheduling. And then quite, uh, and then I was looking for some templates to start journaling. And this is how I came across bullet journaling. So bullet journaling is just one of the journaling techniques that's relatively new. So it was proposed for the first time in 2013 and then it went viral on the internet. It became so popular on Pinterest, Instagram, on YouTube, uh, like COVID-19, <laughs> very popular. And uh, this is how I discovered it and started journaling. Uh, so this is uh, the last three years where every single day of my life is documented in terms of my tasks and priorities and the progress on my tasks and priorities. But now if you allow me, I'll switch. I have uh, some slides. Uh, so we'll continue with the slides. So sh I'll share my screen. Yes. Can you see it? I hope I hope you can see it. I'm just yeah. going. Wow, something happened. I cannot see it. <laughs> it it's a black screen for okay, us. It's too, for coming. Something. Oh, it's it's not uh, oh. it's not how I want it to be. Second, I'll start. Um, So, sorry, haven't used it for a while. Uh, play. Can I just slide only? And let me try one more time. Any keynote professionals here? How can I hide the next slide? It's okay. Or, or is it? Huh? It's okay. We can see the first slide very well, so it's fine. Oh, okay. Um, so the focus will be uh, bullet journaling for achievers, and uh, this is a technique, a tool to help you uh, set goals, become more goal oriented, and also track progress on your goals, um, uh, organize your days as well as capture your ideas and just creative thoughts. Uh, oh, I, I should have removed part one, the basics. <laughs> so it's a part of another presentation that was more specific for our organization, but this one, I removed some specifics just to keep the general methodology for you. So as I just mentioned, so it, it was proposed in 2013 by Ryder Carroll. 
a digital product designer from New York. And this is a person who was suffering from learning disabilities uh, as a child. And so he was constantly experimenting with different recording and tracking techniques to improve his memory and to improve his learning. And so as a result, he became extremely successful. So on this slide, there, there is an embedded YouTube video, a five minute introduction into bullet journaling. You can watch it later. I shared my slides, so you will get them and you can watch this presentation. You can also go to bulletjournal.com and uh, most of the stuff I'm presenting here, I took from the author of this methodology. Uh, so bullet journal is a customizable and forgiving organization system. It can be your to-do list, your sketchbook, your, your schedule, your planner, your diary, but most likely it will be all of this, or it can be a combination of this. Uh, so you know that you, your life is very busy, you have many different roles, uh, many different things that you need to follow up on or um, track and be engaged. And so many of us will have different systems. We'll have some digital calendar, we'll have some device, maybe some apps, uh, some sticky notes, something at work, something at home, something on the cloud. So uh, things all over the place. And the idea is here that in addition to all these things, or on top of them, you will have a very simple analog system. So you have, you have a notebook and a pen, where you have a more holistic view of your life, your goals, your priorities, and your tasks. So first of all, it's an analog system. Uh, it, it, it's a real notebook. Uh, it's not an app. You can also find apps, but this is not the original idea. So the original idea is back <laughs> to the basics, pen and paper. Uh, the method itself is called logging method, and it's an extension of a to-do list. So everyone knows to-do lists, uh, and this just takes it a step further and makes it a very smart, more organized to-do list. Uh, so you write things by hand, you don't type them. It has lots of benefits for our brain. So it, it, you probably know from brain research and other things that it makes difference if you write and you use your motorics. Uh, the second thing, it's rapid logging. It means you learn to be concise. So you use some kind of code, you use short phrases, so that this method, first of all, it doesn't take too much of your time to write things down, and it doesn't take much of your time to read, like you can quickly see, quickly see and recognize and act on things. Uh, bullet journaling is uh, a kind of a language or a system. Uh, so it has its own, uh, syntax yeah it's all grammar it's all rules and now we will go through the main elements of this language and and this syntax as the name says bullet journal it's about bullets or bullet points uh, bullet points to-do list uh, and the bullet points can be of different types so the most common bullet point is a task so this is really a to-do list a task is something that you need to do or you have to do, or it needs to be done. Maybe you can delegate it, but it needs to be done in your life. So the next type of bullet is a note. It means things you wanna capture. It may be an idea, it may be a reminder for yourself, an observation, uh, but not necessarily a task. And then the third type of bullet is an event. And an event is something that occurs in time. So it's something that is scheduled at a specific time. So it's not necessarily a task. So the, it may be related to a task, but it's just something that you need to attend or you need to be present, or maybe you are even presenting. And these different bullets have uh, different symbols. So the symbol of a task is a dot, the symbol of a note is a dash, and the symbol of an event is a circle. And here you can see a little example of a person who wrote a number of things for a specific day. So there are three tasks, one event, and one note. This is the, the simplest way of having a daily journal. This is the simplest example. It's not necessarily the best, but this is the most minimalistic example. That you simply write the date 
and the things that are relevant for that date, whether events, notes, or um, tasks. So of course, all these bullets, they, they go from one status to another. First, you just put them onto your agenda, then maybe you work on them, or they, you progress on them, and then you close them. So these are the different statuses, at least for the tasks and the events. Uh, and so these different statuses are uh, also uh, noted down by using symbols. For, uh, for example, uh, for the task, when you simply put it onto your agenda for a specific day, specific week, or specific month, because you can also plan ahead. So first you just put a dot. It means the task is not complete. It's, 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 an, it's an outstanding task. Then once you have completed the task, you can just cross it over. Um, so if you cannot complete the task when you planned it to, to complete it, you migrate it. It means you postpone it. Maybe you want to do it tomorrow, next week. You, you physically migrate it, right? You just, for example, if this is today and I haven't done it, I'll put it into the next day or I'll put it into the weekend, right? This is called migration. You just put a note that you will see this task in the future again. And the other one, if you have not completed, but you don't know when you are going to complete it, you can put it into so-called future log, which is also known as backlog. A backlog is just your parking lot or placeholder for the things that you need to do, but you don't know when. You simply record it there and they are waiting. You, you will get back to your backlog whenever you can. I'll try to clear it. So this is basically this other, other error point, pointing that you put it into a backlog. And the, the last, when you cross the whole task, it means it's, it's no longer relevant. Maybe it's something that got, got canceled or something else happened that you no longer need to do it. Uh, so again, this is the basic methodology, but then people get creative and they start adjusting it to their own reality. So maybe your own tasks will have more statuses or less statuses. Uh, you just come up with your own uh, system, but this is the original. And uh, also recommendation from me, maybe before you come up with your own system, you can start using the original and just observe your own pattern. And then you'll notice that, yes, you, you want to create different subtasks or you want to use different colors and dif different types of bullets. Uh, so it's a system that you will learn uh, yourself and, and, and you can refine your system as the time goes by. Uh, as for the events, uh, so uh, originally they are marked by an empty circle and then the same thing. If the event has happened already and you basically you can cross it over or if it got cancelled you can just uh, cross uh, uh, strike through the whole event or the same thing if you put postponed it then <clears throat> you migrate it so the, the same ideas apply here even though with the events most of the time you just write it down and then it happened right and and you move on so there is much there is less overhead with managing events uh, the third type of bullets are notes, and it can be, can be anything, because, of course, not everything in your life is <laughs> a task or an event. So there may be something that is relevant, so you just you simply write it down. Uh, so that this journal can also be your uh, brain dump, or, or <laughs> just a place for collecting different ideas, uh, because it's not recommendable to keep everything just in your head all the time. Because first of all, you can forget it. And second of all, you just clutter your head. Sometimes it's good to free it up so that you can just focus on something and not worry that you'll forget those other things. So these are the various notes that you can take. Uh, the, the next concept is the ordering. So all these things can be related to each other. Uh, so in the simplest in the simplest methodology, you just don't order things. You just write them down as they occur to you. Of course, you write them in the respective day, week, or month, but you don't need to think too much that, oh, I need to put it to the top of the page, and here I need to reserve some space, and here I put this on the bottom of the page because this is how I'm going to work on things. You don't need to worry. You can just write them down as you wish. 
so the order is not very important, but of course, if you already have an idea of priorities, you can write them in the order of priorities. Otherwise, you can set the priorities later. Uh, another related concept is the nesting of things. A nesting of things is just making a sub, basically making a sub tasks or sub events or relating things to each other. For example, you are having an event that you invited friends for dinner, but a number of things need to be done in relation to this event. And so you can just indent the tasks under the event. So the event would be your dinner and then th the tasks would be uh, to do the shopping, to cook something, to send a reminder, and so on and so forth, right? And in the same uh, way, you can have a bigger task, and th then you can break it down into subtasks. So you indent, and you just write down smaller steps for the task. And in the same way, you can attach notes to the different tasks and the events. Uh, Signifiers are additional icons that you can use in order to mark uh, or provide ad additional information about the task, event, or a different type of bullet. The most uh, common signif uh, signifier is the priority. For example, if you are using an ABCDE method, uh, I don't know if you know it or not, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Uh, then you can use the, these five letters to say this is an A task, this is a D task. If you are uh, using uh, the quadrant, urgent, important, non-urgent, not important, then you can also use the, those signifiers next to the tasks. Uh, you, can, you can also divide by tasks. So, so if, if your tasks are mostly phone calls or letters, or something else, then you can create different icons and put next to the task bullet so that you can see quickly. These are the, the phone calls I need to make. These are the bills I have to pay. So it really now depends on your, what you are using the bullet journal for. If you are working out, maybe it's a completely different. If you are on a diet, then of course you have a completely different system maybe of things that you are tracking throughout the day. But this is the, this is the concept, concept of a signifier. Sub, sub categorizing your bullets according to what makes sense to you. Uh, and now the bullets need to be organized into collections because otherwise it would be nothing but a to-do list. And we know that to-do lists really don't work. The problem with the to-do list is first of all, they are not rewarding. There's always a lot more to do than, than can be done. Like if you write down all the things that everyone else wants you to do, you'll just be constantly frustrated, right? You've checked, you've checked some things and there are so many unchecked, you completed five things, 10 more have been added to the list. So it's not very rewarding. Uh, to make it more rewarding, you need to organize your to-dos and other things in a more meaningful way, in a way that helps you to get to where you want to be and not where, what everyone else wants from you. Yeah, because these are two different things. Uh, so, uh, bullet journal is a kind of a hierarchical uh, organization system. So, first of all, there is a hierarchy in time, and then there can be a hierarchy uh, or a collection of different dimensions in your life, of different paths and things you pursue in your life, of your different roles, of your different responsibilities. Uh, uh, and in uh, bullet journal, it's called the collection. It means when your bullets are organized according to a topic or according to some time frame, this becomes a collection. So your day is a collection. It's called daily log. Your week is a collection. It's called weekly log. Your month is a collection. It's a monthly log, etc. And then you can also have the collections by topic. For example, you can have a habit tracker. You can have a reading log right you can have a project project log these are the collection by some other property and we'll look into all of them what collections you are going to use it depends on you you can always get inspired by what other people are doing uh, you can apply it to yourself and then you can see what 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 is helpful and what is not uh, so, so the first, uh, which I personally don't use is the index this is like a, a table of content because 
your journal in the beginning is just a plain book. So the journal is just a plain book. Um, ideally, it's a dotted book. So you see that there are dots. This is the specific format, dotted paper, which was introduced in relation to bullet journaling. It means it's not, uh, so it's not gridded, it's not a grid, it's not lines. You can write in many directions. It's, it's nice for sketching, uh, for experimenting with different layouts, but it does not impose anything onto you. So if you don't have a dotted journal and you cannot get it, because now it's difficult to get things, right? Uh, you can use any type of notebook, anything, plain, grid, lines, um, it, it really doesn't matter. This is the most convenient, but this is not a showstopper if you don't have it. So the index, because you, you actually, it's not a planner that you buy where things are already organized by month and day and week. Uh, you, will, you will be creating your own spreads. And also for some of the days, maybe you'll use the whole page. For some of the days, you'll use half of the page, a quarter of the page. On some of the days, maybe you don't journal at all. So you may want to create an index uh, or, or in the beginning of your bullet journal. So you basically write down on which pages your most important things are. Uh, but I, I'm going to skip through it because this is not very important. So this one is slightly more important. Um, also, because you don't, you don't uh, lay out the whole year in the beginning, uh, you just lay out the current month or a little the beginning of the current month the current week and the current day and maybe a couple days ahead if you plan ahead a lot but you cannot lay out the whole workbook like if you want to do it just buy the planner right where everything is already laid out for you and so for all the things for which you have not yet created a layout the next month two months from now and other things you put them into the future log so this future log is a placeholder for the things for which you don't have the layouts. Uh, and mostly the person just takes two pages at the beginning of the bullet journal and allocates a little bit of space for every month of the year. And so that all the things that you know that are coming and you wanna write down, you can write it down here. Uh, so the monthly log is very important. Uh, so actually when you begin the bullet journal, it's normally for one year. Right, uh, so li like a planner or a scheduler, it's, it's for one year, it's just a meaningful size, it has enough pages for one year, um, and maybe you operate in many different sense within a year. Maybe organization plans, maybe you have a fiscal year, any type of year that makes sense for you. Um, and so in the beginning of the year, you create a yearly log where you set your big goals and maybe write down your major projects and then your monthly log should be a, a fraction of your big goals, right? So first of all, you are looking at your yearly goals. For example, you, you are trying to save money or you are trying to make money <laughs> in a different way. Um, or you are trying to lose weight, uh, gain muscles, uh, improve your health. Right, so you can have those big goals, but then every monthly log should be to some extent reflection of your big goals. You decide what am I going to do in this month uh, for my project, for my, my goals. And then in addition to the big goals, each month has its own agenda, right? As you move on through life, you know, now the school begins, now we have holidays, now we have this, now the parents are visiting. So there, are, there will be many other tasks that are simply relevant for this month. And in the month, monthly log, you have normally two, uh, two pages. This is called the spread. Two pages that are just uh, next to each other. Two pages, this is called the spread in bullet journal. And here you write down the tasks and the events of the month. Uh, so this is the original methodology. Uh, you are basically, you have two lists, tasks and events next to each other. Uh, but many friends are not happy with the original methodology and they use something more, maybe more graphical, even I myself use, so you can have a calendar, you can ha have a month view, and then you can write the events into the different days of the month, and you can write your goals somewhere underneath the month. Uh, so don't be confused by this calendar. This is the body calendar from the Baha'i faith. It has 19 months of 19 days. So that's the calendar I'm using. 
But depending on where you are, most of you, of course, use Gregorian calendar, but in other countries, people use other calendars. So it should be basically whatever your month is, this is your monthly view, you have your events, and you have your goals. Uh, uh, so in the original methodology, there is no weekly log, uh, which I'm surprised uh, because week, in my opinion, and also in the, in the practice of many uh, people, uh, business people, is a very important unit, unit of planning. And uh, many of you are maybe familiar with the book uh, of uh, uh, Stephen Corway, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So here, there he also speaks about the week as a very meaningful unit of planning your life. Because the month, there are too many unknowns. There will be so many things that you don't know yet so you cannot plan them. But within the week, you are more in control of what's happening. And then you are planning more granularly. Granularly, so, so it, it's nice to have a weekly log. And, and the same idea, that you have a week, like here, my little weekly log. Uh, and here in the week, I can write down what I have from the backlog from the previous week, what I haven't completed. I can write down the new things that I plan to work on. And here, as the week goes by, I can even track. So this is not a good example because the week has just begun. But here, this week, I can also write down all the major things I'm working on, on my tasks, and then I track them, like on which days I worked on them, and which of them I may be completed, and which of them go into the backlog, and will it be in the next week. But this is the extension of the original methodology. So the author says, move on to the daily log, and in the daily log, you just have the date, maybe the day of the week, and then you write down all kinds of bullets that are happening or should happen, you have planned for this day. Tasks, notes, and events uh, mixed and matched in the way that makes sense to you. So and the author says, at the next day, uh, wherever you left, uh, and you're ready to continue. So according to the author, actually, you don't, lay out the next day until you're very close to the next day, maybe the evening of today or the morning of the next day. But depending on how much you plan in advance, this may not be the right strategy for you. Uh, so I tend to lay out the whole week because many of my things uh, are planned by me or my team members or my bosses within the week. And this way, because I laid out the whole week, so the week has uh, seven days. So this is my week log, and then comes day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I lay out the whole seven days so that I can simply write things down into the respective day. So if you plan bi-weekly, maybe you even lay out two weeks. So now it really depends on the type of business or, or your life cycle, how many days you lay out. Maybe you lay out the whole month. I don't know. But of course, the more you lay out, the more you restrict yourself to the space that you have allocated. Um, so here comes the more exciting part. So this is still, this is time management, right? So these are the techniques that are very similar to the classical uh, planner or scheduler. Here comes the more interesting thing is that you can have your custom collections or custom logs. So depending on what else you want to track in your life, uh, track or plan, uh, you can create your own collections. So some of the very, very popular collections could be a spending log. So for the people who want to analyze their spending, of course, if you write down such sensitive things, you need to think about maybe protecting your book. Uh, right? <clears throat> Some other people have a reading log. So they actually, they set the goals. And this is not for leisure reading, it's more for, uh, for your professional development or some other educational reading that you have to do, uh, or spiritual reading. So you can have a reading log. Uh, you can have a habit tracker. If you're consciously working on developing some habits or replacing some bad habits through through some good habits in your eating, in your working out, in your sleeping, in your psychological behaviors. Um, and we'll also will look into it a little bit if the time allows. 
So these are the custom log. The examples you can see here, the food log. Some people track their meals uh, because maybe they have a food related uh, goal. For example, they're trying to analyze their uh, allergies uh, or they just want to find the correlation between the way they feel and what they eat, right? Or, or they have some skin issues that they try to link to the food that they take. Um, so the idea of the migration is that nothing gets lost. So that you don't procrastinate uh, and that you are accountable to yourself for everything that you have written down. It is this habit of uh, planning seriously because most of us or most of people out there, they have so many plans in their heads uh, but then they procrastinate on most of them because it's just in their head and there's these big ideas that they never break down into smaller actionable items or even if they do they just don't schedule things they get so busy with the uh, low-hanging fruits or urgent things that no time is left for anything that they really that they really want to to achieve in their life so for this not to happen, you develop the habit of migrating all your tasks. It means at the end of the day, you review your list, you close, you postpone, you put into the backlog. So nothing just, if you have a task that uh, was not closed, like, let me try to find something like here. Like I have a task that I hadn't closed on that day. It remained open. It means it will be in my next day or in my next week, right? So at the end of the day or in the morning of the next day, you look at, into the previous days and you close every single task. And the possibilities you have is to, to cancel it, uh, to move it forward or to put it into a backlog and get to back to it later so nothing gets lost. So this is the idea of mig migration. And also when you start uh, using the journal, if you haven't done it already, you will just learn to plan more carefully because you don't want to frustrate yourself by com over committing yourself, but just putting 20 different things that you want to do. So at some point you will notice that somehow you accomplish 10 things per day. So maybe plan, plan 10, 10 things per day and some optional ones, but don't over commit yourself because this is, this is not uh, exciting. It's very exciting to complete a task. You know, there is a, there is a release of dopamine and serotonin <laughs> in <laughs> hormones uh, in, into your bloodstream because this is how we are, the humans. We are not animals. We are goal-driven. We need to achieve something every single day. So the sense of achievement, the sense of actually putting this cross, uh, turning your dot into a cross uh, is very... Um, it's a happy moment. So this was the original methodology uh, of this uh, inventor of the bullet journal. Uh, the fact that it has become so popular, I think, is due to its customizability. So he has not uh, given too much. He has not set too much different rules. The rules are very simple. But the rules that you can have your custom log, it open, uh, opens up the whole world of opportunities for you, right? So what kind of custom logs? And now we can look into, just let me check the time. So I understand it, it's your um, lunch break. Like for me, it's already a quarter to nine in the evening, so I'm not going anywhere. But uh, if you need to go somewhere or you just have to quit, no worries. Yeah, I will not take it personally. Just, <laughs> just move on. Uh, so I'll try to speak for about maybe 10 more minutes and then we'll have some time for questions. So beyond the basics, first of all, you can have extra supplies. Uh, uh, depending on how creative you are, how visual you are, if, if you have a nice handwriting or you want to have a nice handwriting, if you want to use different colors, if you want to put in some motivational quotes or photographs from your days, you can get those supplies. Uh, so I think less is more in this case. You can get the supplies later, but if the supplies motivate you, get more supplies. You can get supplies for beautiful handwriting. Uh, you can get those stencils like you see here. 
so you can have stencils uh, so that you have nice borders and lines. You can have this uh, washi tape uh, if you want to very quickly beautify your pages or to create some dividers. Like I, I use washi tape here uh, to mark my month. So if I have my month log, it means the one that I have to get very often throughout the month, I just put a washi tape as a divider. You know, I just bend over the page. So this is how I use it. I, I don't care about the beautification, but uh, somehow it's, it's uh, useful. If you use different colors, you can have markers, right? You can have a few markers. Uh, you can have the pens that are erasable. Uh, you know, there's a new invention. So there are some regular pens, like gel pens, that are actually erasable. So if you made a mistake, you can erase it. So I love those. Um, you, you should have a good pen that's writing nicely, smoothly, right? So that you don't struggle with a bad pen. Um, so these are the supplies, the bullet journal, journal itself, a book. Uh, some bullet journals have, do not have enough pages for one year. This is unfortunate. It means somewhere like closer to the end of the year, you, you need to start another bullet journal. Uh, so your things, your, your year is not together. This is not the end of the world, but it's unfortunate. So when you buy a bullet journal, check the number of pages. You know, there are 365, four or five days per year. If you use half a page per day, calculate, do you have enough pages or not in this journal? Uh, so using colors, of course, is also helpful uh, in many different ways, uh, but it means you have to have those colors with you. So what I ended up, uh, I have this little pen case, there I have six markers. So I use those six markers uh, to outline different things in my, in my daily spreads or where I want to. Uh, so if you, if you want to use them, please do. Here you can have a nice example that a person, uh, this is a day, day log, you see? So the person is using the whole page for a day and they create a timeline here. These are the hours from the eight hours in the morning. It can be from five hours in the morning, depending on when your day starts. And then until the time you go to bed, plus minus a couple of hours. And here you can just uh, indicate roughly what you've been doing throughout the day. So for example, you can track the time that you've spent in the meetings. You can track the time you spend on social media. You can track the time you spend working out. Basically you decide why you, why you are tracking it? Why is it useful? If it's not useful, don't do it. But maybe it is useful. For example, I do track the time that I spend in meetings and outside because these are my goals to spend more time outside and to spend less time in meeting. So I'm using a, a similar thing here. So this is my timeline, my hours, and then I use different colors to indicate physical activity, outdoor activity and time in meetings or time with the screen, like electronics time. So this one is really exciting. This is what you do in the beginning of the year. Uh, and this is going to be your driver uh, for every single month, for every single week and day. This is called the wheel of life. And this is a technique from the individual psychology. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it before, but this is a self-evaluation and goal-setting technique. So the wheel of life is, you can imagine that your life is a wheel that needs to roll. And the different segments of the wheel are the different dimensions of your life. Uh, so you can download the original template. So the individual psychology suggests that you have to have these 10 dimensions. But whether you need to have all of them or some of them, it's up to you. Uh, but the good thing is to have as many dimensions as possible, at least partially presented in your life. Because all of them together show how balanced you are. Uh, and some of the commonly used dimensions are finance, right? Because it's also, it's causing a lot of stress in people's life. So uh, we should not just be detached from it. <laughs> uh, in a way, yes, but in a way, no. We have to be very 
conscious and systematic about it. Another one could be your family or your partnership. Another one could be your friendships or your social life. Another one, your personal development, your education, your career, uh, your health. So that these are the examples of the dimensions that are present in almost, that need to be present in everyone's life to, to some extent, right? At least as a goal. Of course, many of us, or some of us do not have a family, or some of us are now in the process of receiving education and not working yet, just educating themselves. So it means you can have slightly different priorities, um, but you, you should at least have goals in those areas. So at the beginning of the years, you have this wheel where you divide the wheel, the circle, into the areas that make sense for you. So here it's divided into 10 segments. You can divide into four segments, into six segments, and you give a name to each one of them. So it will be a dimension in your life. And then you evaluate yourself on the scale from one to 10, or from zero to 10, where you are now, right? So this is a self-evaluation. So you can say my finance, I'm five out of 10, my health, eight out of 10, my family, seven out of 10. So you continue, you evaluate, and it's your own evaluation. It's not what your partner thinks <laughs> or your mother thinks, it's what you think about your own life. And then you basically, you fill out those segments, then you connect the lines, and here you see your wheel of life. And you can see, is it round, is it big, is it small, is it balanced, or is it very unbalanced? So it's, if it's very unbalanced, it means it cannot roll, right? So you have some of the dimensions that are weak that maybe you want to strengthen. And then the next step would be to set some goals uh, where you want to be. Maybe you want to go from seven to eight. Maybe you want to go from three to 10. Also up to you. So you set priorities for every year yourself according to what you want to achieve. And so on the next page, you just write down your big goals for that year, right? Your big goals. You can have one or two. Uh, so then when, when every month occurs, you go to the spread and you think, what am I going to do in this month for which goal? And you pick some of those which you think probably you're not going to work on everything all the time, but you, you just decide. The, the, the huge difference here is that you decide and you plan. You just don't say, if I have time, because you know how that works, right? <laughs> you decide. Because the only thing that will happen are the things that you have scheduled, in, that you have put into your life and created some sense of commitment. So this is the exercise that you can do anytime. You don't need to wait for the New Year's <laughs> for your declarations. So you can just do it as you start your journal. Or maybe you can just reserve the space when you start your journal and do it on some of the weekends. You just return to it and refine it uh, until you are done. So uh, I, I did it for myself. And, and for me, it's, it's hard to draw that circle, right? And to all, all these different uh, lines. So I just printed it out and I, I, just, I just glued it into my journal. Yeah. I just took the original one <laughs> with the topics that are here because I like them, actually. They have all the things that are relevant for me. And so I evaluated myself and I put some goals uh, for this year. And uh, for us, the year began on the 20th of March. So it's not so, so long ago. So let's move on. Here are here's some other examples. So if you don't want to struggle with, the right, with the drawing a circle, you can use the bar chart. Right? It's just this, a different presentation of the same idea. If you're extremely creative, you can use something like this. You can create your own visualization of, you know, 10, <laughs> zero to 10 and different dimensions. So if someone used the laundry rope here. Uh, another thing that you may want to have in your journal is the dream board or a little dream board or vision board. So maybe you have a big one uh, already. So these are the things that motivate you. Uh, it can be a pictures of yourself where you just look better <laughs> than now, or just felt better than now. It can be a picture, picture of your uh, 
motivational person, your mentor. Uh, it, it can be some stylish images or things you like, like a cup of tea or, or a piece of cake, uh, nice quotes that you have. So you can have a mini, mini dream board in your journal, but you don't have to, right? You don't. It's just, uh, there's a lot of proof that um, images uh, motivate us a lot. So it's good to have something like this uh, around. Another technique that you can use is called a mind map or concept map. Uh, I mean, we can use it for basically anything at all. This is a non-linear presentation of, of a to-do list or of some kind of list because our brain is not linear, right? You, you know how we think, I wanna do this, what can I do? I can do this and this or this and if this works then i can do this if this doesn't work then i can do this so there are all these different things that all these different ideas and you can capture those ideas and options using a mind map so if you have a big especially if you have a big goal or goal or you have a complex task so in order to address the complex task and not and not procrastinate on it because you just don't know where to start you can use a mind map uh, so you put the task into the beginning or your goal into the middle. You put the goal into the middle and then you start brainstorming. What can I do for this goal? Right. And then you can just have different lines of actions for this goal. In this example, this is the person wants to lose 20 pounds. And, and of course, you need to give yourself a deadline because it's not 20 pounds in 20 years. This is not a good goal. So this is 90 day goal. Okay, so the person says 90 days. Now you start brainstorming and maybe you, you don't know how to do it yet. And you don't know if it's gonna work. You know, losing weight is a difficult thing. So different strategies work or don't work for different people. And first you wanna lose it and then probably you wanna sustain it because it's not about losing the weight. It's just achieving and keeping the new weight. And so the person starts brainstorming and maybe first you try this and then if it doesn't work you try this or you try a combination of things and then as you move through the things you start refining your mind map i use mind maps for complex tasks a lot and this is something that uh, our math teacher from high school taught us to do uh, so to apply an algorithm and it's very helpful for me i still use it so for some of the complex projects that I do at work, because all the systems that we have, issue trackers and stuff like this, they are very linear. So things are just all over the place or Excel, you know, it's very tabular. Uh, and so and this is for me uh, a tool for breaking down complex projects and tasks into steps and options. Because it can be this, this and this, or it can be this, or this and then you continue refining and here you can also mark priorities and then you can also close things remove things so this is a, these are the mind maps that i use for work related purposes so you can use mind maps for breaking down complex things into steps uh, this is just an example that your monthly log can be more creative than just a list of tasks and a list, list of events so you can have a calendar view so that you can also see the weekdays and how busy you are. Um, and you can put some goals and some tasks because there's a difference between tasks and goals, right? This, this is not the same. Uh, this is an example of a weekly planner. And this one has a technique that I use a lot um, uh, that you can see on, uh, uh, it's called, a, it's, it's, it's a running list. This running list, uh, allows you to see how your week is going in terms of the tasks that you are working on because otherwise you have every single day and you you don't have an easy view of a task that takes several days or maybe even several weeks and this way you can write down the different tasks that take longer and here you can track them and then also you can indicate that you have completed them or they are moving into the next week right so i, I use this uh, a lot and then also it's very useful in some meetings where we have say like, share what you've been doing in the last two weeks. 
just imagine. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, depending on what you do, I could not remember because I work on so many different things for many different customers. And then I just can open my, my running list for the two weeks and it looks like, oh my God, Svetlana knows everything. I don't, <laughs> it's just here. Um, so here I already showed something similar that even your daily spread can be slightly more organized, right? So you can maybe divide, and I like this, this one I do the same, just allocate some space for your events because they are time bound and, uh, and allocate uh, some space for your tasks, right? So that you have events here, they're linked to different times and the tasks are here they're not linked to times so that you use slightly more organized uh, now about the prioritization techniques um, how do you start working on the tasks randomly the easiest first the hardest first the shortest first the longest first actually you know a, a mistake many people do is um, they try to get rid of the short tasks first just let, let me get it out of the way out of the way and then the day passes by you were just getting things out of the way you haven't even started working on your priorities because there are so many things that um individually they seem short but all together they'll just eat up your day so e according to the book eat that frog i don't know if you know the book it's a nice book very entertaining eat that frog you can listen to an audio on YouTube if you have no time to read. I listen a lot because then I can also do things in parallel. Eat that frog. Uh, so they suggest uh, to do exactly the other way around. You need to eat the frog early in the morning. It means your most, your hardest task, your highest impact, impact task should be done the first thing. And your lower impact task should be done later. This way you will progress on the most important things and you may not progress on the less important things because this is how you want, how you want to be right uh, and so uh, there are two ways of looking of this two methodologies um, uh, actually two of them are here but the first one is here uh, this is another one where you, you you can use this quadrant where you put all your tasks you don't need to do it in paper, but you can do it at least mentally every single day. You put your tasks into urgent and important, right? So a task can be important or less important, urgent or less urgent. And so many tasks can be important and urgent or urgent, less important. And then uh, which one should you work first? What do you think? Urgent, but not urgent. Urgent and important. Urgent, important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so actually, uh, the important thing is important, right? So there can be many urgent tasks that are low impact. Mm -hmm. So we should work on urgent ta tasks only if they're important, but the focus should be always on important. And it's <laughs> it's important to allocate time for non-urgent tasks because the non-urgent tasks they can they they can take long anyway and so if we never get to them we'll never get to them because you think oh today i won't find so the the uh urgent no the important non-urgent tasks should be uh maybe broken down into subtasks so that you schedule them step by step and don't forget them but most people think only in terms of urgent and this is a mistake we should think more in terms of important or high impact which task will be will get the most benefit? Maybe it's not urgent, but when I complete it, it will be a huge benefit. So let me, in this sense, maybe it is urgent if you think of it this way. And here on the next uh, slide, uh, you can see these two techniques uh, next to each other. So the A, B, C, D, E method from Eat That Frog, it means for all your tasks, you define A, this is the highest impact, and therefore the, the top priority, it has nothing to do with urgency, just the highest impact. Then B is medium priority, C, low priority. D, things you can delegate. That's another skill. If you can delegate something, try to delegate. Because your time is the most precious time for you. 
if there are things that others can do and you, you have access to the pool of resources, try to delegate, to free up your space for A and B. And E is eliminate. Uh, and eliminate, you would think like, why? If it can be eliminated, then I eliminate it. But it's not true. There are so many things we do that can be eliminated, but we don't eliminate these things because we are attached to them, maybe even addicted, or we are not conscious. So when, when we start thinking of it in this way and asking ourselves, like, do I have to do it? And if not, try to eliminate. You can think of a lot of things, places you don't need to go, events you don't need to attend, maybe some entertainment that you don't necessarily to have in this amount, right? And these are all the things that you can eliminate so that you free up the space for eating the fattest frogs. Uh, and the other method is urgent and important, right? And here, uh, to consciously learn to work on non-urgent and important tasks and prioritize them. Uh, so this is an example of project tracker. Depending on how long your projects are, you can track by month, by week. So this is just a matrix view, right? You have a timeline and you have the different things. You can apply it to anything you want. Um, habit tracker is an important one. If you, if you are working on habits, uh, you know it takes 21 days to develop a new habit. So if you repeat something for 21 days, you build new neurological connections in your brain. And so, so on the 22nd day, your brain will remind you that actually now it's the time to do it. And this way you can develop any habit you want. Uh, and I like to think it in, not in terms of overcoming bad habits, because this is not motivating. Who of us wants to get rid of a habit? No. A habit is our nature, right? It's our second nature. So if you know that some of the habits are, are not good for you, it's better to think of developing new habits that will gradually push the old habit away, right? So if you, have, if you don't move enough, maybe you just develop a habit that you go somewhere, that you take a walk or you take a bicycle ride. So you start thinking in positive terms and just bringing in new goals into your lives. So it can be about your health, about your nutrition, about your sleep, about your social life, about anything that you want to improve. Just think back of the wheel of life and the dimensions that are not strong and try to develop some habits here, right? Maybe drink more water. Just things that are not difficult, but once you've developed them, they just improve your life very easily. Uh, mood tracker, if you are a moody person, uh, and this is an example of one pixel per day or one square per day so that you have the whole year on one page and you'll allocate the colors to different things that you track. So you can track your energy levels, you can track your mood, um, you can track your health, you can track your sleep depending on why you're doing it, right? So maybe you're trying to figure out some correlations so you can use a uh, year uh, pixel per day visualization. Uh, that's a more creative way. You can draw a mandala. <laughs> so every circle of a mandala is just one day of the month. This way you can see a pattern emerging. Uh, gratitude log is a popular, just developing a habit of being grateful. Thinking in terms of the, uh, when you think at the end of the day, what is the most special thing that, I, that I'm grateful for that happened on this day? Uh, a similar one could be a crisis and victory log, uh, where for every day you just try to, identify the major crisis and the major victory. Or if you didn't have a crisis, just the major victory. Or if there was no victory, just the major crisis. Just to have this habit to analyze your day. This is a fast log. So the, for the persons who fast, who have this spiritual uh, obligation, you can have different goals for different days of the fast. Just found it and copied here. The reading log, where you can have the progress bars and you just coloring. So if you are reading multiple things, especially for your education, here you can have a progress bar for each of the things that you are trying to complete or, or you are studying. You can have quote collection. You can either write them or cut them out and, and stick them into a journal. Uh, you can have arts. Many people go crazy about hand lettering, about calligraphy. So you can practice different fonts uh, here. So it's, it's a good extra skill that you can learn because then you can make beautiful posters and cards and other things, maybe things with your children. 
uh, or doodling. It's a new art, right? So uh, creating very little icons with just very few strokes, but that are very uh, expressive. Basically, you can have a little doodle for every single day, just so that you could, by looking at it, you can remember what was this day about? What was so special about that day? This is an example of someone being extremely artistic, but actually it's cheating. I've seen there are many stickers that you can buy <laughs> and very quickly <laughs> you can just create an amazing spread <laughs> for your week. You don't need to uh, draw these things. Uh, so, but uh, of course this is very sophisticated, even though it looks more sophisticated, it's very quickly to, quick to create. But my suggestion is start minimalistic, start small, just don't spend too much time outlining and creating templates and cutting and gluing things in. Just uh, start very simple uh, and figure out what you actually, what makes sense for you. So this is an example of a relatively simple, it still looks nice. It, it's, it's, it, it's not like very plain. So you can still, you can still have some lines, some different fonts, uh, maybe even some different colors, but basically focus on your tasks uh, focus on your goals and train this system, train yourself. You will see how much space you need for each day, for each week, how many tasks, uh, what is a task for you, right? So you, you also, you want to make the tasks such that if your task takes 60 days, you don't want to write it 60 times in every single day that I'm still working on it. Maybe you just break it down into 30 subtasks or you can break it hierarchically as, as you move along. So you'll figure all these things out when you start using the journal. It's very important to start and it's important not to overkill yourself, uh, not to feel depression. Now I have to have this future log. Now I have to have this. Uh, if I have a habit tracker, do I have to have 30 habits? No, you can have one habit or two. Just start with a, with a few and uh, you will see how it goes. So thank you very much. So I understand it was a long presentation. And uh, if you wow. have questions, well, please. First of all, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that uh, we have the, the, the slides. So I'll make sure that everybody who is on the call will get all of these slides that, uh, that Lana went uh, over. And, uh, uh, you know, that's, I think it was like, it blew my mind. It was like way more than I expected in terms of uh, the in, in amount of information and detail. So it's thank you so much. Phenomenal. So we do. Yeah, also, I haven't shown the last slide. On the last slide, I have a link to the Pinterest board where I have different sections where I collected many different templates already for your inspiration. So we'll make sure to share that with everybody so you guys can uh, have access to that. But maybe we can have some uh, uh, an opportunity to ask some questions or comments or ideas. That would be lovely. You can unmute yourself. And if you are asking a question, you, you don't have your camera on, please turn it on. I have a question. Um, good afternoon. It's nice to meet you, Svetlana. That was an incredible uh, presentation. It seems like there are a lot of uh, aspects of the methodology that are similar to like some project management practices. Um, but I have my particular question is about the the wheel of life. Um, you had mentioned that the evaluation criteria is is your own criteria, right? Um, and not what someone else thinks. But I, one question I have: Let's say you evaluate yourself, just as an example. Um, like family and friends. Maybe you feel you're spending enough time with your family. Maybe your family doesn't feel like you're spending enough time with them. Is there room for outside input in the, into the evaluation criteria? Oh, sure, I think so. Uh, because feedback is very important, especially areas such as your social life or your career, or maybe your team, your accompaniment, uh, all these dimensions that include other people the feedback is very important on, the, on those dimensions. Uh, and especially if you are a family, some of the dimensions are naturally shared. For example, your finance, right? If so, if, so, if the rest of your family is unhappy with your spending <laughs> or with your earning, then it is a real problem. <laughs> right? So maybe, uh, I mean, you can evaluate yourself according to your own criteria, but maybe you set the goals, <laughs> including the feedback <laughs> of the rest of your family. <laughs> so. 
this is what I think, right? Because ultimately you want to feel uh, good. You want, you want to feel happy about, about your life. And the, the feedback of the people who are dear to you and, and who, who matter to you, they, they are important. Mm. Thank you. Good Thank question. You. Any other questions? Don't be shy, guys. This is Farah. Um, that was amazing, very inspiring. And you know, it's interesting, I can definitely tell you and Olya are, are sisters, because Olya, for as long as I've known her, she's been very um, creative, and she can take a thought, an idea, a picture, and then just really, like, there's a wow factor to it. And so I really appreciate your presentation. So for those of us who have no artistic ability and really looking at starting simple, one of the things, um, and you may have touched on it, but I, I think I need a little bit more help. Um, when you're just getting started and you're looking at all the different dimensions, like career, family, uh, let's say health, let's say there are three priorities. Um, how do you approach um, the journaling so that it, you know, that you can go back and, and find it or that you can find inspiration to it? Um, I'm very methodical, you know, being engineer background, kind of process oriented. I can follow the step-by-step -step guidelines. But one of the things I've always wrestled with in any system that I've tried to do, like with journaling, is going back and finding something, whether it's an inspiration, an idea. Um, so I'm not quite sure as a beginner how best to do that. And I know that you showed like some bar charts, maybe some reference points. Just wondering if you had a couple of quick pointers when you're getting started, um, how not to lose sight and really feel like your journaling is productive. Mm -hmm. uh, I suggest two things. For all the priorities that you have identified yourself, the big priorities, create a mind map. So in addition to, to just writing a goal, for example, to, you know, to get rid of this chronic disease or to improve this autoimmune condition or to lose 20 pounds or to make a lot of money this year or to become debt free, whatever you have as a big goal, create a mind map for it. And all your mind maps should be ideal in one place, or you use some washi tape or some kind of some some page delimiters or how they are called, so that you can you can easily find your mind maps. Uh, for example, I use my mind maps at the end. So this is um, this is the beginning of the book. There I have my goals, my calendar, and so and here this is the end of the book, the last pages of the book. There I have my mind maps mm. because i'm not going to have too many of those these are okay. for big things okay right and for some of the things i can even remove them like if something is really over i mean i probably i won't because it's a nice memory but it's good it's good to have like here <laughs> i have a bujo mind map so i just started thinking about this presentation bullet journal and so i just started uh, drawing for myself the points that uh, I not to forget. Uh, so this is one thing. And the other thing is monthly tracker. Uh, so that every month, you know, you have this goal, uh, identify some of the actionable items for this goal. Uh, so if it's health related, for example, you can say that this month, I'm going to juice every day, right? So you know, juicing is good, you haven't tried it, just say I'm going to juice every day. And at the, at the end of the month, maybe it will be so amazing that it will, you'll just juice for the rest of your life. Or maybe you'll notice, you know, it hasn't helped. I'm going to try something else next month. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are uh, trying to overcome some addiction, maybe a small step. Maybe, you know, you are consuming too much sugar and you know it's unrealistic to go sugar free. But maybe you'll replace some of this white sugar by fruit sugar. Or maybe instead of two spoons, you put one and a half spoons. So it's not too painful, but you know, after 30 days, you will get used to one and a half spoons. Mm -hmm. And then you set the next goal. Uh, or like myself, I'm trying to get rid of caffeine or reduce caffeine. So I just alternate uh, caffeinated, decaffeinated. Or I make the cups a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. For all the things that I know that are real addictions, it's, it's very hard. 
It is, so we may not have the, the willpower, the discipline, or it's a deeper issue. We can make little steps. And then if, if you have this habit tracker, so for, for each uh, month, like here, so for each month, just write down the days of the month and write down the different things that you are tracking. And you don't need to be perfect. It just, it means I'm trying, right? I don't know if I'm going to have a long walk every day, but I'll try. And so every day where you worked on it, you just cross it. You didn't work it. It remains blank. And some of these habits, maybe you don't want to do it every day. Maybe you want to work out every three days. You will see it here, right? Uh, so maybe the mind maps for the overall collection of ideas and strategies and the tracker, monthly tracker, for trying things out and then learning at the end of the month if they worked. Awesome. And sometimes you'll be surprised how easy it is. I think sometimes the universe rewards us for trying. I had this with coffee. Uh, one month I was drinking decaf and the next month I didn't feel like drinking it. I like I didn't feel so you see because we have this physical addiction mm -hmm. or sometimes we have an emotional addiction mm -hmm. so some things happen you just wake up and you just realize you know I can actually become a raw vegan marathon runner I don't know <laughs> these things happen when you start trying I, I think every each one of you has a story of some kind of transformation that happened because you made the first step right That's awesome thank you so much it's very helpful mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? If not, I want to thank Svetlana for, well, this was phenomenal. I think it has given us so many uh, just ideas and inspiration to follow through and to, to give it a try to organize it. I think for everybody here, I just, you know, one thing that I, I'm taking away from this, that this is really a self accountability system, right? So it's, uh, we know for any successful person, that's a person who is self-driven. And we don't always start being self-driven. Sometimes we have to develop it as a skill. And so having these techniques, these systems that help us kind of like trick us into self-accountability, trick us into organizing our days, trick us into like, okay, and give us like what Svetlana was talking about, give us so much pleasure in the process of checking an item off, right? Of having things accomplished, of seeing the, the sliding scale of us progressing along the task. That's, uh, you know, it's a visual representation. We know we have uh, learned it in success theories that the sharpest pencil is, uh, I mean, dullest pencil is sharper than the sharpest mind. So you uh, putting things on paper is incredibly powerful. Anything and everything we do in our organization. And so if we keep go doing this, keep continuing, finding a way that works for us, you don't have to do it exactly the same way. You don't have to use every single tracker available. You could choose one or two and stick with it. Start somewhere. You don't get overwhelmed and think, oh, there is so much. I might as well quit before I start. But instead of it, you just like decide, okay, I'll start with the first one. I'll start with a day tracker. Or I'll start with a or, you know, the, the will or whatever it is, and you still, you know, move forward. I'll make sure that we all get the, um, uh, the, the slides. I think this, for me personally, it's just a really great way to see myself and uh, see our life in a holistic manner rather than just the business goals or just fitness goals and, you know, kind of just try to pull myself together into a lifestyle that I'm really proud of, that I'm making progress in every single area of my life that is important to me. So, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really mm -hmm. appreciate, and I appreciate all the guests joining in from everywhere, especially the ones who, you know, are already in the middle of the night or early night, and you guys are joining us. And of course, Zeta, thank you so much. Forever. My pleasure. Yeah. So, if there are any questions, you can still forward them to me. And uh, uh, but of course, you will find it out. So, internet is all the social networks are full of uh, ideas. Yeah. You just need to start and find your own routine. And good luck with that. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Take care.
Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have a good day, everybody. Have a blessed day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good one, everyone.